In today's video, I survived 100 days automating in hardcore Minecraft. Not just any old Minecraft, though. Modded Fabric 1.17.1. And if you understand mods and you know that this being the latest version of Minecraft, it's might be, you know, it might be a challenge. Being Minecraft version 1.17.1 means, though, I'm going to have to be smart and resourceful in order to fully design and develop these fully automated systems that will make me rich, hopefully. My goal is to automate everything from a tree farm, food farm, fish farm, shimmy farm, all the way to an automated infinite wither kill another star. OP energy! G farm, which is super OP, okay? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. We're gonna have to work our way up there. It's not, it's not gonna be easy. This is hardcore Minecraft. Throughout this video, we're gonna be going through eight different automation phases, each building off the previous system. So make sure you're subscribed and watch until the end of the video so you don't miss out on how I transform my Minecraft world into a fully automated city in just 100 Minecraft days. Let the automation begin! Day one. We began our journey. This is hardcore survival, so we do have to, you know, actually get materials. There were some innocent animals nearby, so I politely killed them. Don't worry, though. Soon enough, we'll have machines automatically doing the slaughtering for us. I crafted some wood armor, almost died to a skeleton, mined for a fraction of infinity, killed some more sheep, and, uh, well, I'm not proud of it, but perhaps I may have also ended the lives of some, uh, geese and duckies. Oh, look at their star. Anyways, I made a boat and began crossing a decent-sized body of water because I saw coconuts. Wait. Oh, these are these are real coconuts. Wow, that's crazy. That's nutty. Ah, you see what I did there? Hey, got it. Okay, a village. Naturally, I stole their hay and uh, took their waste stones, which are going to come in handy later. The night creeped in fast, and it being hardcore, I was definitely not ready. Luckily, my years of Minecraft experience came in handy, and I uh, safely dug a hole. Woo! Escaped by the skin of my teeth. After eating and healing, I found a cave and yelled a very weird random word that you should probably listen to real quickly here. Hello! Subscribe! <laughs> yeah, you should do that, yeah. Stupid zombie. Hey, look, it's day two. I tested my patience by mindlessly staring at the furnace while I smelted the horse I mine. All right, see this iron? Check this out. Yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. He's beautiful. The rest of day two could be described as animal cruelty, strange golems, giant villager house that you betcha I looted, rubber trees, and uh, yeah, I had to steal some of these. Anyways, I killed this spider, then set up camp for the night. Head to bed. Oh, man, look at these stars. What a good night to be playing Minecraft. All right, well, our journey's just beginning. I'm gonna head to bed, and tomorrow we'll get to grinding. Let's keep on, uh... Day three started off great because doggos meet Craig and Bentley. All right, we got Craig and Bentley. Now, my pets usually die if you've seen my other videos, but trust me, this time it's going to be different. I'm going to take great care of them and make sure nothing bad at all happens to them ever. I found this ruined nether portal instead of marker because we're going to need this crying obsidian later for a secret item. Then I uh, enter this nice looking cave. I wanted to make a steam mining drill, which breaks blocks in a three by three and has silk touch, but to craft it, I needed a bunch of iron and copper. I crafted a backpack and upgrade it to help keep my inventory from getting full and then i was blessed by notch and uh, found these diamonds baby ladies and gentlemen i present to you diamonds to make the parts for the steam drill i needed to make a forge and a hammer the copper gears and drill head were a bit complicated to make but everything you need can be like made in this forge here using either the hammer or saw just button you click between them and just like that <laughs> mining drill baby now the way this works is you place down a water source and right click with the drill and fill it with water then you place a fuel source like coal for example in the slot next to the drill and now you can mine in a three by three with self touch oh yeah speaking of mine that is exactly what i did for the next two days collecting resources for you know future machines that we are definitely gonna need to automate day six i found this house with a book and cool inside so i wrote down some goals for this video okay so first make an automated or grinding slash smelting system Two, make an automated power system using a tree farm. Three, expand it to an automated food farm. Four, make a lightsaber. That was just for fun. Five, make an automated fish farm. Number six, make an automated ore harvester. And number seven, make an automated XP farm. And number eight, this one's hard. Make an automated wither star farm. Number nine, make an enderman farm. And lastly, number ten, make quantum armor and a nano saber. We sure got our work cut out ahead of us, but uh, I, you know, I'm excited. I made a hang glider to get around easier and eventually ran into this little shack. This little shack, by the way. Is now going to be my starter house for the next couple of days. And uh, around it is where we would eventually create the infamous city of Automatia. Dogs, you can come in. Craig Bentley, still alive. Thank, thank goodness. But, uh, yeah, I think I'm just going to kick it here, get some sleep. And tomorrow we're going to find a place to start setting up and automating. Let's go. Uh, a Minecrafter's dream, truly. But this city is not going to build itself. So uh, I quickly got to work smelting down the ores I mined and organizing my inventory in the chest. And uh, okay, this land was apparently overrun by grizzly bears. Not good. Okay, especially this? since this is hardcore. So I decided to equip myself with the diamond broadsword, which did 13 attack damage. Uh, that's pretty good. It's no nano saber. Now that 
had found a place to build, it was time to start building. Okay, listen, the first thing I wanted to automate was an ore tripling processing system. We're just gonna call it Greg for short. I started by building the building Greg was going to be in. And once I completed the outside layer, then I began putting together the actual system. To make Greg, you're going to need these items. A pulverizer, an electric furnace, two cables MK1, and a wrench. All from the Industrial Revolution mod. Also a burnable generator from the Extra Generators mod, pipes and servos from the pipe mod, three chests, and finally one hopper. Okay, time to build Greg now. First place two chests on top of the other, then place an electrical furnace by one side of the chest, and the pulverizer under the electric furnace by the other chest. Now shift click your wrench to switch it to configure mode and then right click the pulverizer and configure it so the side connected to the chest is blue for input and the top connected to the electric furnace is set to orange for output now configure the electric furnace so the bottom side connected to the pulverizer is set to input and the side connected to the chest is set to output okay so now we need to power the machine place two mk1 cables connecting the pulverizer and electric furnace and then finally place the burnable generator connected to a cable i wanted to do a quick test to make sure the system was set up correctly the chest connected to the pulverizers where you input all your ores which should then get sucked into the pulverizer, processing it into three dust, then pushed into the electric furnace where that one dust will be smelted into one ingot, and finally I'll put it into the chest. Boom! Everything was running smoothly. Now there was one more thing we needed to do, but I needed resources, and so I headed into a cave and got a bunch of ores and even found this, uh, skeleton spawner! This is exactly what we needed to get automating in the very near future. No way, invisibility cave? Wait, <gasps> I'm completely invisible. Okay, this was a great mining trip. I headed back home and said hi to Bentley and Craig, and then went and processed the ores I had gotten in, in Greg. Speaking of Greg, yeah, Greg needed a little upgrade. We, we weren't actually done with him. I added a chest connected to a bunch of pipes leading into a hopper connected to the burnable generator, then shift-clicked a servo onto the pipe connected to the chest. This allowed me to easily feel the generator from the outside, and boom, Greg was finished! Now, we could craft upgrades and whatnot to make Greg faster and more energy efficient, but Greg was perfect just the way he was. For me, at least for now. I guess I actually named it the Ore Processor 3000, but I, I I don't know. I just, I like Greg better. I mean, it's just, it's Greg. Anyways, Phase 1 Automated Ore Tripling Processing System. Complete, baby! Time to move on to Phase 2 Automated Food Farm. Well, actually, more like Phase 1.5 Semi-Automated Food Farm. I, I thought it would be a good idea to get a semi-automatic food farm going until we can actually afford to upgrade to fully automatic. Everything after this, uh, let's just say it gets more and more complicated. So, uh, make sure you're paying attention. Let's begin. Okay, so I decided to go with a three-tiered vertical farm, and, well, I, I ran into an issue. Yeah, I built it too big for water to be able to reach all the blocks, but that's okay. I, I quickly fixed it, making it an eight by seven on each layer. Now, I'm sure it's been done before. I didn't look anything up, but I came up with this piston water release method to harvest the crops, and you need about five pistons, and then you'll place the water blocks behind all the pistons using an inverted redstone signal connected to a lever. Boom! Semi-automatic three-tiered farm complete! Pretty cool, pretty cool, but not fully automated, so we will have to, you know, fix that. Soon, soon. But first, let me build up extremely high using dirt and jump off attempting the MLG water bucket challenge because I just want to feel something. Yeet! Oh! <laughs> Next, I begin preparing for phase three. The automatic infinite tree farm that doubles as a power generator. This farm is crucial because it will actually help us power everything else we automate. The first step was getting rubber trees. The second step was cows. Take you, or grab you. Where's my house? Oh, the baby's following. He's like, dad, don't leave. Beautiful day walking my future hamburgers, you know? Yeah, I grabbed some cows because we were going to be automating an animal meat farm very soon. To protect my cows, I had my dog, Craig, watch over them. Good boy. All right, guys. I know you guys are brothers, but... Time to plant some rubber trees. Let's just say I started a side quest. I made a diamond pickaxe and collected obsidian and built a nether portal to grab glowstone in the nether because before we get too deep into all this modded automation stuff, I, I figured it'd be a good idea to set up a simple storage system from Tom's Simple Storage Network mod. To set up the system, I used 24 chests, two inventory trims, one inventory connector, and a crafting terminal. Okay, let's begin. I started by crafting a wooden platform where I would later on build my house. First, place the inventory connector and then connect the crafting terminal too. Next, place your chest on the side of the inventory connector, and every time you switch directions with the chest, you're going to need an inventory trim. Now, the chest will connect to the system if they are connected to the other chest for up to 16 blocks in each direction. And literally, that's it. It's super simple, and now we have a great storage system. I was going to need ender pearls, and so I fought this enderman, and you won't believe what he dropped. He hit hard. Oh, but he's dead. 
Did I just drop a spawn egg? I just got an enderman spawn egg. No way. No way. I was super excited because in this mod pack, you can use spawn eggs on spawners to set them to that mob. That means we could use this enderman spawn egg to make an automated ender pro farm. And trust me, we do. Watch, you'll see. Okay, now that we have the storage system completed, it was time to get back to work on phase three. The automated infinite tree farm power generator. Let's just call it Julia for short. Now, we do have to craft a bunch of machines to build Julia, and this is when it kind of starts getting complicated. I suppose the most difficult thing to craft here was the lazuli flux container mk2 to make this you need a nikolai ingots which you get from iron and nikolai in a solid infuser to make it simple for you guys real quick here's everything you need two lazuli flux containers mk2 one electric pump two solar generators one chopper one electric furnace cables and one wrench all from the industrial revolution mod you're also going to need an auto crafting table from tech reborn a steam generator from the extra generators mod three hoppers some chests pipes and servos you will also need one more secret item which I will show you and explain in just a second. All right, let's begin building Julia. First, place a chopper followed by chest on its side. Now, place the cables directly on top of the chopper. Now, you want to go up pretty high because this is where we will be connecting our solar panels to, and you don't want trees growing and blocking the sunlight from the solar panels. Next, place a hopper going into the chopper. Then, place a pipe connected to the bottom of the chest and place another chest. Place a servo on the bottom of the top chest. Now, place pipes below the second chest. Place the electric furnace and then a hopper going into the electric furnace. Make sure to configure the electric furnace so the side connects to the hopper is set to input and the front is set to output. Then place a chest in front of the electric furnace followed by a pipe and servo. Next, I dug out a hole leading to my storage system so I could pipe all the items that we get from our farm directly into my storage system. Next, place servos as shown here. This step is crucial to prevent Julia from getting clogged. Okay, on this server, whitelist saplings, apples, and sticks. And on the side leading into the electric furnace, whitelist oak logs only. Okay, next place the Zuli flux container between the solar panels and the chopper. This will act as a power buffer so that the machine can run overnight. Now configure it as shown. Okay, we are nearing completion of the first half of Julia. We still need to build the steam generator room. This is where we will turn the charcoal we get from the tree farm into flux energy. Power, baby. Okay, very important. I began by building the outside walls first. Now the main thing here is to remember that you're going to a 2 by 3 of water source blocks for the pump. Place the pump above the middle water source and connect the steam generator to it. Now place a hopper on top of the steam generator. Connect cables from the generator to the Zuli flux container on one side and the pump on the other. Now, you're going to need to quick start the pump in order for this to work. Just place a piece of coal or wood in the steam generator and right click it with a water bucket. Now it's working. The last piece we need is to connect the output of the charcoal from the electric furnace to the hopper leading into the steam generator. I wish I could say it's done, but we still got some work to do. And real quick, I need to show you this clip of this poor bird. He's got an enchanted bow. Oh, oh, he killed the bird. <laughs> and if you think that was weird, look at what I see the next day. You, you hold me on the fort, buddy. Greg. Oh my gosh, what, what happened to my cows? No. Okay, enough messing around. We need to complete Julia. There were two main steps left in order to do that. A, we needed to build an automated skeleton bone meal farm. And B, well, uh, let me just show you. I traded with a villager to get an emerald so I could craft this dark enchantment oh, table that lets you select what enchants you get. Then I enchanted the axe with them breaking one. Remember that special uh, item I was talking about? Yeah, oh, this is it. You're probably confused. Let me explain. I uh, added a mod that actually makes unbreaking unbreaking. It's called actually unbreaking. And and it makes whatever item that has unbreaking on it last forever. Now, this is uh, pretty important because you have to have an axe in the chopper in order for it to chop trees. Okay, so now at this point, I guess you could say Julia is complete. Oh, wait, but there's one problem, though. There's one problem. She's way too slow to be generating us much power at all. Oh, okay. I'm sure you see where I'm going with this. I enchanted Silk Touch on a diamond pickaxe and headed to the skeleton spawner we had found earlier. There's a mod installed that lets you right click it to get the spawner's egg, and then you can use Silk Touch to pick up the spawner. <laughs> I think I found a glitch though because it, it kept duplicating the spawner every time i mind it I, i'm not gonna complain though it is what it is all right time to build a skeleton farm let's do it i began by carving out a classic nine by nine cube place the water bucket in each corner and then dug straight down on the block with no water this is where things start to get modern. i crafted diamond spikes and then headed to the nether and fought some blazes so i could craft an eye vendor which is needed to craft a vacuum hopper okay this setup is super simple you have the mobs fall into the diamond spikes die and then the vacuum hopper sucks in their items and xp a fluid hopper then pushes the XP into the surrounding tanks for storage. Yeah, that's right. That means this doubles as an XP farm. Okay, sick. Then we have the items being pushed out with the pipe and servo into a chest. Now, from the chest, we set up a nice pipe and servo that's whitelisted with bones only, leading directly to the auto crafter. All you have to do to set up the auto crafter is place a bone inside for the bone meal recipe, make sure you lock it, and then configure the auto crafter to import and export on the proper sides. You may need to hit shift O to hide REI if it's getting in the way, by the way. Now I set up a buffer chest in case we produce extra bone meal. And then lastly, I just borrowed some power from the solar panels and connected 
crafted it to the auto crafter. I prettied up around the skeleton farm and then crafted a spawner key. Now, a spawner key actually makes it so you can configure the spawner and make it spawn mobs even faster or slower, but even faster too. This is when things get, gotta get crazy, man. Yeah, the skeleton farm was going off. It was going off. Like, it was wild, which is good, but we were going to run out of storage way too fast. There, there was one last thing I had to do. I headed to the desert and grabbed cactus in order to make a trash can. I placed the trash can down with the hopper on top and then connected it to the chest with an item pipe and servo. I set the servo to blacklist bones and arrows, making it so it's going to throw away all the items except the ones we blacklisted. And just like that, phase three, complete. Julia is officially working. We now have a fully automated infinite tree farm generator system that can run 24-7. Not to mention the skeleton farm also is generating us XPs. That's a big one. Now that we had a stable source of energy coming in, it was time to make a jetpack. I crafted the wood jetpack and then realized I was running low on resources. So I made a new diamond pickaxe and enchanted it with fortune one and efficiency four and went mining. I then managed to upgrade all the way to an iron jetpack and charged it in the lazuli flux container. The next day, I made a diamond bow and headed to the nether to kill gas because apparently you can craft a totem of undying in the smog pack. And well, I probably, sh I probably should have done that a while ago. The jetpack came in handy. It was nice. Once I got a gas tier, I headed back to the overworld and I crafted the totem of undying. Now we uh, hopefully shouldn't die, right? <laughs> Cows, buddy. You guys just hanging out? <laughs> oh man, I'm a horrible person. Now that I had this totem of undying, I felt invincible. Okay, well, that, that's probably not a good thing. Anyways, I decided to go take a break and explore and see what else this oh, world had to up, offer. Villages? And uh, well, dragon! There's a dragon! Hold on. Oh, that's lava. All right, so I have to go up to this dragon, right click it, and hope I tame it. I've never done this before, so here goes nothing. I repeatedly, fearlessly jumped on the dragon and, and till it got to know me, I guess, and, and we became best buddies. Yeah, I tamed the dragon and gave it a saddle so I could control it, and then there was only one... How was I gonna get this dragon out? It's literally in a cave underground. I ended up vein mining and even vein mining while flying, and well, okay, I definitely almost suffocated to death just a couple of times. It's, it's fine. You know? I made it out alive, though, and, and that's good. I was super happy to get my own dragon in this, and if you're new to my channel, well, I like to name my dragons after subscribers who leave a nice comment. Today's comment was from a subscriber named Chippy underscore. Chippy says, Yo, Josh, your channel was one of the reasons that inspired me to start a channel. I've watched your channel grow, and the videos are always there to make me happy. I hope one day you reach 1 million or even 10 million, and also, you are amazing. Dude, thank you so much, Chippy. You are now a dragon in my Minecraft world. Congrats. Hopefully, we do hit 1 million subs. That would literally be my dream come true, and it would be awesome. I'm sure we can do it. Anyways, over the next couple of days, I finally worked on building my own house. I used a delightful combination of spruce wood and bluestone and cobble deep slate, and I, I think it came out pretty good, if you ask me. But take a look for yourself there and uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Now that I have my own home, I figured Chippy the Dragon needed his own as well, so I built him a little dragon pen and uh, this is when something horrible happened. Yeah, I, I headed over to the cows and that's when I noticed it. Craig, he, he had changed since I last saw him. It looked like he had some sort of sickness, some sort of withering effect, and, uh, well, that's not what's wrong. He, he'd been back here protecting the cows, just slowly dying. Luckily, though, I was able to feed Craig in time, but... No! What about... Where was Bentley? It was a horrible day in the small city of Automedia. <laughs> Bentley was the best dog that I have ever had. I loved him so much. <laughs> Way more than Craig. The disappearance of Bentley became the core reason I was going to do this. Finish this 100 days and automate literally everything possible in Minecraft. All for Bentley. And so I got right to work. I nice milked the butt. cows so I could craft a rancher. And it was time for... What, fa what phase are we on? Oh, yeah, yeah. F phase four. The automatic wheat and schmeat farm. Oh, yeah. This is a good phase. All right, here's the items we're going to use to make it. We'll need some chests, cables, servos, pipes, two hoppers, an electric furnace, a rancher, a farmer, two solar panels, and two lazuli flux containers, MK2, and a wrench. Okay, this setup is fairly simple. So let's begin, shall we? First, dig out an 11 by 11 square and place the farmer in the center. Then I did the same power solution as before using the lazuli flux container and solar panel, and then I added water source blocks so we can farm the land, then place the chest on the side of the farmer. Now make sure to configure the farmer to output into the chest. The plan is to pipe it all the way to the rancher, so I set that up once again with the same power system and ran the pipe from the farmer all the way to the hopper going into the rancher. The chest on the side of the rancher is where the meat will be outputted into, and so I piped that leading into a hopper leading into an electric furnace. That way the beef will be cooked into steak, and then I piped it from there into my storage system. Imagine that infinite beef. What a beautiful dream. 
and that is about to become reality, by the way, with this uh, epic Schmeet farm. Make sure to configure the rancher to not feed babies so you don't waste wheat. I put some wheat in the rancher just to jump start it and test it, and well, uh, see working. for yourself. It's working, I see hearts. Dave. Oh. The rancher worked, but the wheat part of the wheat and Schmeet farm wasn't quite done yet. In order to make the farm run faster, I piped the extra bone meal from the bone farm into the farmer, and it worked perfectly. Ladies and gentlemen, all of those watching, I present to you the automatic. We and me for. I mean, I'm just saying, guys, this city's getting pretty automated. The bones were bone mealing, and the wheat was growing, and the rancher was ranching, allowing all the cows to do their thing, and everything mwah, was working. I'm pretty happy. Phase four completed, baby. Listen, we're gonna get to the bigger automated farms very soon. Like, like the infinite withered nether star farm. Oh, yeah, yeah, trust me, real soon. You know, if we don't die, of course. But there's some steps, some farms we need to make before we can get that advanced. My next goal was to transform the semi automatic wheat farm into a fully automatic three tiered food farm. Farm. This included harvested wheat, carrots, and farming potatoes into baked potatoes. So <laughs> let's get started. For this farm, I used four solar panels, one lizardly container, three farmers, one electric furnace, four hoppers, four chests, and a bunch of servos and pipes. I began by placing a farmer in the center of the farm and connected it with cables to the four solar panels. For each layer's farm, it's it's basically the same. You have a farmer with the chest on its side. Make sure you configure the farmer to output into the chest and set up a servo on each chest. Now, because I wanted to go the extra mile, I piped all the items into a chest, which allowed me to split off the baked potatoes into a hopper connected to an electric furnace and then meet back up with the carrots and wheat getting transferred into the main chest. In other words, baked potatoes OTW, okay? On the way, baby, okay? Obviously, if you want to place a Lizuli Flux container to access a power buffer, you can, and if you've configured all your farmers right and servos right, and don't almost die like me. I don't have a shield! Oh my gosh. Oh, get <laughs> My jetpack ran out of fuel. And boom, just like that, we now have an automated farm for infinite carrots, wheat, and baked potatoes. Oh, by the way, later on, you'll actually see we use a different automated system to e even speed this up, make it way faster. Pretty sick though, right? Anyways, listen, I, I could not wait any longer. I decided I wanted to try and craft a lightsaber, not just any lightsaber though, a dark saber, which does 30 attack damage. I was able to craft the lightsaber hilt, but I guess that was the easy part. The difficult part was getting the spinal shard, which is what turns it into a dark saber. To get the spinal shard, Shard, you have to find a spinal geode under a mushroom biome. How in the world am I gonna find a, a mushroom biome? Oh, look, a, a biome compass. That's nice. Oh, hey, look, a mushroom biome. Oh, hey, hey, look, a spinal geode. Oh, hey, look, a, I can't. I guess I needed to make a dark saber lens with the spinal shard, which requires a dragon egg. Okay, fine. You know what? Maybe I'll just craft the dark saber a little bit later on. Okay, fine. It's, it's pretty OP. It's fine. All right. The next day, I went out looking for sugar cane. Took this picture with that statue from the Night of the Museum and then grabbed a bunch of sugar cane. We needed sugar cane to craft conveyor belts. Why do we need conveyor belts, you ask? Th that's right, it's time for phase five. The automatic infinite enderman slash gunpowder slash gold slash whatever type of farm you want. The concept is actually pretty similar to the skeleton farm, so I'm not gonna go into too much depth of how to design this farm. And quickly though, can we just admire that enderman head? Like, that's nice, right? Oh, I will tell you the reason why I use conveyor belts instead of water, and that's because endermen will, they, they teleport if they touch water. Right? That's, that's that's a thing? And mental. Yep, 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 that's a thing. Now, I also decided to throw in an Earth Creeper spawner because I had gotten that spawn egg earlier. Plus, we were going to need a bunch of gunpowder later on, and the Earth Creeper gunpowder crafts into two normal gunpowder. Nice, right? After a couple of days of some hard work, the farm was complete. I had it set up to pipe all the items into barrels at the bottom. So, here's the thing. The, the farm worked great, but the, there was one tiny problem. The enemy would sometimes get damaged from the spikes and teleport out of the farm. And, like, um, you'll see, this becomes a, a, a big problem. So, well, if if you plan on building this in your world, I would recommend building it way higher in the sky, or maybe somewhere in the end where they can't teleport in. It still worked though, and I, I couldn't be bothered to fix it yet, so I just left. It. I wanted to craft quantum armor. It's the most OP armor in the game that has all these super cool features. The, the problem is it takes so many different machines to make, and it's super expensive. I wasn't sure if we had time yet, so I didn't craft it. That being said, if you want to see me craft it, leave a like on this video. If we get to 100,000 likes, I'll do it in a 200 days continuation of this series, alright? I promise. For now, I decided to go mining for diamonds and make diamond armor, and I also upgraded my jetpack all the way to a diamond jetpack. Uh, so the, uh, diamond jetpack can hold 30 million energy, and it used quite a bit since it was so fast, so I decided to upgrade the Lazuli Flux container to a MK3. It can hold 1 million power, so as you can imagine, it's not that simple to craft. Since we were going to be needing more energy, I decided to make more steam generators and pumps, and connected them to the system the same way I did before. Now we can store 10 times as much power as we could before, and our producer 
producing three times as much as we were before. Th this is progress. Hopefully by the end of this video, we're making a lot more power with the nether star generator, but, but this is good for now. I wanted to enchant my diamond armor, so I headed over to the Enderman farm and AFK'd for a bit, and uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. This is when I realized I, I really, I messed up <laughs> big time. Yeah, there was Enderman everywhere, like, like everywhere. My game was starting to lag like crazy. And then I went and tried oh, to slow geez. down the Enderman spawner, and of course this happens. No! No, it's filling up with dirt! Eventually, I fixed it, so then I enchanted my sword with looting three and headed to the nether to collect wither heads in preparation to build the automatic wither killer nether star farm. That's when the best thing possible happened. Not only did I find oh. a zombie piglin spawner, a wither skeleton also dropped its spawn egg. Oh my gosh. <gasps> no way, we just got wither skeleton spawn eggs. Let's go! We get infinite head! And this means two things. One, we can make an infinite gold farm. And two, we can also make an infinite wither school farm. Fully automatic. Which, spoiler alert, by the way, it ends up being perfect for the ultimate automatic wither killer generator we make later on. I wasted no time. I switched out the enderman spawner with the wither spawn egg and added a zombie piglin spawner as well. And after setting up all the piping, I had the best idea. We could actually use these bones and bring them over to this farm over here. Oh, that's such a good idea, but I'm getting tired of doing this. So many pipes everywhere. I'll go get the pipes. I was not going to be lazy. Nope, not, not after what happened to Bentley. So I got right to work setting up the pipes to pipe over the bones and set up another auto crafter to turn the bones into bone meal. And now that that was complete, our food farm was going to be kicked into high gear. We were becoming fully self-sustained. Slowly but surely, this, this city of Automania was becoming automatic. And I absolutely loved it. We still got a bunch of work to do and we need to hurry though. Anyways, I realized that an Enderman placed a dirt blocked by my cow fence so uh all my cows escaped so i kindly gathered all the cows and hung up a couple more for decoration and uh then i went fishing you know it sure is great being out here being able to fish but you know it'd be better automated fishing yes okay it's time for phase six the automated fish catch and cooker 96 fish xd 96 for sure this is something everyone needs in their minecraft world trust me now you're going to need to make a fisher which requires planks which you get from compressing four sawdust you get sawdust from putting wood in a sawmill now once i I had made the fisher. I did not place it. I made a chunk loader and used that to load chunk. Okay, here is everything I'm going to use to make the Fisher XD96. A basic fisher, an electric furnace, a lazuli flux container MK2, two solar panels, and a wrench, servos, pipes, cables, trash can, two hoppers, and three chests. All right, let's do it. Place the fisher directly above the water, connect it to the lazuli container and solar panels, output the fisher to a chest, connect pipes outputting into another chest, output pipes into a hopper leading into an electric furnace, output the electric furnace to a chest. Now connect pipes from the second chest to a hopper leading into a trash can. Then I connected the chest by the electric furnace up to my storage system. Lastly, I enchanted a fishing rod with unbreaking, put it in the fissure, and boom! Everything worked perfectly. Phase 6 was officially completed. Man, I am super happy with our progress so far, but there's one more major system. We still need to automate the king of all automated systems. The infinite wither killer and nether star generator. And this system will give us an incredible amount of power. But there was one item I just i couldn't wait any longer to have yeah i wanted the dark saber so i afk by the xp farm for a bit i guess even with the chunk loader i still had to be near it for it to work well after collecting a bunch of xp i enchanted my diamond armor loaded up on eyes of ender Whoa, began dude. my search for the stronghold the stronghold was awesome Whoa. subscribe and finally the portal oh it's dead, dead, yeah. yes it's the end portal in all its glory now i just gotta not die you know because it's our gore mode and you know <laughs> Well, here goes nothing. All right. Whoa, the end looks a little bit different. I'm not going to lie. I was afraid of dying in here after, you know, all this hard work we had done. But nothing was going to stop me from getting that dragon egg. I shot out the crystals and began shooting the dragon. All right, it's just me versus you, buddy. You ready to die? I'm your dragon. I will take your egg. Give me your egg. Go 360 no scope. Ooh. Okay, the dragon perches, and I think I have it when literally it almost oh, kills oh, me. Oh, oh. I healed up and took the final shot. And just like that, I soaked up all the XP. <laughs> I grabbed the dragon egg and headed back to the overworld. Da, 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 da. We beat Minecraft. Thirty level enchant. I'm on him real fast. I placed the waystone at the stronghold portal so we could come back and then made the journey back to Automedia. I crafted the dark saber lens and combined it with the lightsaber hill and the smithing table. And this thing is awesome. This is it, baby. Oh my gosh. Oh, looks like a couple of cows got out, huh? I just I had to test it out. It cooks a steak, baby. After senselessly slaughtering way too many, way too many cows, literally, I just was massacring cows with the dark saber for like 30 minutes. Anyways, I realized I could enchant this, the dark saber, and so I did. Max enchants, literally, literally insane. It has infinite durability. 
Once again, it was time for me to put my life on the line in, and of course, with that, this entire world. But I needed to kill three withers for what we were about to craft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh gosh, that's a wither. And shoot! Swing, swing. Oh, we got him. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. I love this dark saber. Luckily, the dark saber was everything I hoped it would be. It did quite a bit of damage on the withers. Oh, yeah. Okay, this is when I have a close, a close call. You know, I almost died. Now that I had three nether stars, I could craft the withered generator. Generator. Oh, my gosh. This thing can store 2 million E. That, that's a lot. And it makes 4,000 E per tick. To put that into perspective, that's uh, 34 times higher than our steam generator. That's a lot. Basically, it's OP. Now, imagine having an automatic nether star four yeah this is gonna be awesome i upgraded to a lazuli flux container mk4 because we were going to be making so much power and this thing can hold 10 million lf which is a lot that's so much i guess you could say at this point we've officially begun phase eight the automatic infinite with a build a killer nether star op generator v1 i've decided i'm going to dedicate this phase to bentley and so we're going to call this system bentley in order to make bentley we need wither proof blocks and uh like a ton of them and they are not cheap they take oh so much netherite ingots and so i used the gunpowder i was collecting and made a, a ton of tnt and uh let's just say uh, these got a bit explosive <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, eventually I crafted a ton of witherproof blocks and made the wither builder. Now, before I got started on building Bentley, I changed all the spawners to wither and AFK by them to harvest a ton of wither skulls to jumpstart the farm. And we got a ton. Here's what I used to build Bentley. One wither generator, a wither builder, a lazuli flux container, MK2, a vacuum hopper, a ton of witherproof blocks and witherproof glass, six solar panels, a slaughter, a hopper, and a bunch of cables, pipes, and servos. I began by building the witherproof blocks in a cube just large enough for the wither to spawn and not touch any block then i made a small hole to place the vacuum hopper in so it doesn't blow up place the wither builder and set up an input chest connected with pipes to the wither builder and then connected the slaughter and vacuum hopper to one chest with pipes as well okay the idea is one chest is for inputting soul sand and wither heads into the wither builder and the second chest is a buffered chest where the harvested wither stars will end up now connect solar panels and the lazuli flux container to the slaughter machine next i connected pipes to the nether star output chest and piped them all the way to the hopper going into the wither generator and just like that the op bentley farm is complete. Okay, wait, there's two ways you can choose to operate this. The first being is use a redstone clock. The second is a button or lever. The wither builder does require a redstone signal in order to build the wither. Now, now a redstone clock is one way to make this farm automatic, and it works as you can see. It's not a one I would recommend. Here's why. One nether star generates so much power. Like, like the burn time lasts so long. Look, look at this. Oh, look at this thing. Go, baby. The automatic infinite wither builder killer nether star OP energy generator V1 was now complete. And uh, I gotta say, I think, I think Bentley would... He'd be proud. I know. Hey, if you like 100 day videos with friends and mods, check out my channel or click one of these videos. Subscribe. Thanks. See ya.